Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the 7 biggest mistakes you're still making in Fortnite. Some of you might remember, I made a very similar video to this one last season. You boys really seemed to like it, so I thought, why not make another one with mistakes pertaining specifically to chapter 2. These mistakes will be a combination of gameplay errors people make, like a trick or mechanic I see used incorrectly, as well as some more general mistakes focusing on your mindset and things that are holding you back from improving. My goal is to help you understand why they're all bad and what you can do to avoid them. So, without further ado, let's start with a really common mistake players make after they get trapped in a box. Now, the last common mistakes video I made addressed how most people were placing traps inefficiently. Your first instinct is to always place them on your side walls, but the right way is to place them on your roof so your opponent cannot run to the opposite side of your box and avoid the damage. Great. Most of you guys knew that though. The new big mistake is when you're the person inside the box with your opponent's trap on the roof. What way too many people do is try to break out the side or shoot through the ramp, which will do nothing against a good player. What you need to start doing instead is immediately look down and edit out the floor. This will drop you below as soon as the edit goes through and will prevent you from taking any trap damage. But Jarian, what if it's not my floor? Well, in like 98% of situations where you're the person getting trapped, that floor will be yours. If it's not, then just break through it. Your opponent likely will not react in time to replace it, and you'll fall down just as fast if you had edited in the first place. So from now on, anytime you're facing another Papa Jarian subscriber who hits you with the roof trap, or even just boxes you up and puts you in an awkward spot, look straight down and edit yourself out to avoid any damage and reset the fight. Second is something I've noticed a lot in Chapter 2, mainly because of the new map. That mistake is pulling your glider too high and getting a really bad landing. The weird thing is that nothing has changed in terms of dropping from the bus. It's still fastest to drop straight down rather than going down on an angle, and your glider will still pull earlier when you're above a mountain than it will when you're over flat land or a river. The only thing that's changed is the map and its terrain. Pretty much every POI is now on a flat level of land, and there's not too many big hills or mountains. Even Misty Meadows, which is right next to the biggest mountain on the map, sits at basically the same level as the lake. What you need to do is start dropping a lot further back from wherever you're trying to land. One second too early or too late can make or break your entire match from the start. The good thing is that this is an extremely easy mistake to avoid as long as you actually start paying attention to and adjusting your drop. For the third big mistake, we're going to switch it up to the more general stuff. The fault here is not optimizing your keybinds and or your game settings. This includes not using sprint by default, having all your building binds on one finger, and most recently, not switching to confirm edit on release. It's kind of crazy how many people watch my videos yet still don't follow through on any of my guides that optimize their settings. Even after I explain all the benefits and why changing something around is undeniably better, they don't do it. The main reason for that is straight up because they're scared. They're too scared to be bad for a few weeks that they'd rather stay at the same skill level. The thing is, that is not going to help you improve. Optimizing your gameplay is like taking one step backwards to go two steps forward, and staying with your current keybinds and settings is the same as taking zero steps backwards to go zero steps forward. There will always be freaks of nature like Booga or Mr. Savage who have unoptimal keybinds yet still build and edit faster than I ever could. But think about how much better their movement and overall gameplay could be if they went out and optimized them. Those players just don't have the time to switch and relearn everything while still competing each week. Remember though, none of you guys are at that level. A huge part of getting there is to have the best keybinds and the best settings. So please, stop holding yourself back. 
Trust me on this one and optimize every gameplay option you can as soon as possible. Mistake number four is not rotating to zone early enough. This is a mistake I've also been seeing a lot this season, simply because of how little mobility there is on the map. On the old map, you could take as many fights as you'd want and could still make it to zone with ease. You had slipstreams, launch pads, geysers, ballers, ATVs, hoverboards, zip lines, shockwave grenades. You had an unlimited number of ways to get to zone. In chapter two though, you have motorboats and swimming. That's it. Anytime zone is across the map, you're likely going to be forced to rotate on foot. This should not be too difficult to do unless you rotate late. Every arena game I play, I see people storm fighting and dying because they rotated way too late. The fact of the matter is, you cannot take fights anymore when you're not close to zone. There's no mobility for you to use or for you to gain by getting a kill. Something that's helped me is seeing where zone moved to and then marking where it is on the map. After that, I'll do my best to get to the center of it while not using a lot of mats, not taking a lot of damage, and doing it as fast as I can. So whenever you're playing and you see the next zone pop up, think back to my annoying voice in your head telling you to rotate early, because not doing so is a huge mistake. Fifth is probably my biggest pet peeve that triggers me like nothing else in Fortnite. It's the mistake of building without a purpose. A lot of you guys should know what overbuilding is, and that's a big part of it. But the core of it is players building to build and not building to win the fight. Fortnite is a battle royale at its core. Yes, it has an awesome building and editing component to it, but the whole point of that is to help you kill your opponent and play defensively. I feel like people forget that and only try to get high ground because they see other people want it. The reason people want high ground in the first place is because it's the most advantageous position to be in. But how can you start building with a purpose? The first place has to be in creative. If you're someone who cannot change their playstyle from 1v1s to actual matches, then this applies to you. Start thinking about how you can use certain builds to block your opponent off and catch them off guard. Also, whenever you do get high ground, you need to use it to pressure your opponent. Booga and Mongrel are perfect examples of doing this the right way. In creative, they try out tons of flashy retakes, but when it comes to actual matches, they're always keeping it simple and building with the intent to kill. Every single piece they place has a purpose, so watch them and do the same. The second to last mistake I'll cover is what I will call not going for the optimal edit. This is something I touched upon in my video on how to edit like Mongrel. Essentially, for every edit you make, there is a best way to perform it. One example would be a simple top corner edit. You can start from either the left and drag your crosshair down to the right, or you can start from the right and drag your crosshair up to the left. The problem is that people only practice and use one of these ways. And I say it's a problem because it can make your edit slower depending on the situation. Let's say you had just reset an edit, so your crosshair is already positioned to the right. The fastest way to edit the top corner would be going up to the left. The wrong, much slower way is to reposition your crosshair to the left just to start the edit and bring it back down to the right. Tons of people do this though, because that's the only way they're comfortable with doing it. I gotta admit, I still do this for my bottom corner edits, since I've only practiced doing the edit one way. So what I've been doing is starting to practice the awkward edits I'm not used to, and using them in game. All in all, just make sure you pay attention to how you perform each edit, and whether or not it's the most optimal way to do it. The last big mistake I see way too often is people not understanding how the grid system works. The grid system is just the name for the system of squares under the map that allows you to build. It's really not that hard of a concept to grasp, but what can be difficult is correctly using it. The most common example of messing it up is while taking or replacing a wall. 
If you're too close up to it and you look straight ahead, it will place on the next tile away and not in front of you. This could really screw you up in game and get you killed if you aren't careful. However, if you start to learn the ins and outs of the grid system, you would know to look straight up or straight down as you replace the wall from that distance. So again, be aware of and learn the grid system before you make a mistake that loses you the match. Overall boys, those were 7 of the biggest mistakes I see people making in chapter 2. If this video helped you out, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Thank you to all my homies out there using code Jarian. Remember to message me on Twitter or Instagram for a shout out because those are the first places I check. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.